a Facebook message, I will I will get that addressed for you. All right, um, so let's go into some trigonometry. So the main important thing here, we want to solve um, two sine of x, two sine of two x plus one is equal to zero, and we want to solve for all x values between zero and two pi. All right, so the first thing we need to do is, you know, basically when we're solving, we're trying to find the values that are going to make the equation true, right? So we need to isolate this sine of 2x. We need to isolate the trigonometric function. So to do that, just like, you know, algebra 1, which some people are asking for, you're just isolating this 2x. So equals negative 1 divided by 2. So we have sine of 2x is equal to negative 1 half. Now, forget about the 2x for a second. Let's just pretend this is, um, you know, what, how would we solve the sine of, you know, let's just say theta is equal to negative 1 half. Like, what would be the solutions of that? And to do that, we would look at the unit circle and we'd say, all right, the unit circle, when is sine equal to a negative 1 half? Well, that's going to be in the um, second, and, or I'm sorry, third and the fourth quadrant. And as I was mentioning in the light earlier, that you know, in sine of when we need to know the first quadrant, like when is sine just equal to one half? Like what angle is sine equal to um, the one half? And that coordinate, or sine represents the y coordinate. Stop. That's going to be that. Oh, come on. That angle right there, which is pi over three. Okay, so that coordinate, no, I'm sorry, that's one half, that's pi over six, I messed that up. <sighs> Come on, there we go. All right, let's do that again. The y coordinate is pi over six. I was thinking uh, I got my x's and y's because we're not on the trig yet. All right, there you go, so that is square root of three over two comma one half, right? Y coordinate there, pi over six. But again, that's positive. We're looking for it negative, so it's going to have the same reference angle. So you got to think, what two angles then are in the um, third and the fourth quadrant that have a reference angle of pi over six? And you know, once we kind of get used to this, at least in my class, we have pi over six. So that's going to be seven pi over six, and that's going to be eleven pi over six. Okay, so that is kind of like how we'd solve it without the double angle. So now we have a double angle, right? So what we're going to do is, you know, we have this 2x. We don't have like a regular theta in there. So, but what we're going to do is follow the exact same process, all right? We're going to say, or actually what we're going to do is we're actually going to solve for all real solutions. Forget about this restriction for a second. And let's just find all the real solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and solve for 2x. So I'm going to say 2x is equal to, oops, I'm sorry. So the equations that make this true here is 2x is going to equal 7 pi over 6. We know that answer is correct. And 2x is equal to 11 pi over 6. All right, so I actually, I think my explanation is getting a little weak here. So let me, let's kind of explain here again. Let's go back through this. So we know that sine of 2x, or just some angle, right? Let's actually think about it like this. Sine of some angle equals negative 1 half. Now we know those two angles are down here. OK? Now. What I want you to understand is the way to do this is we need to add, we need to figure this out for all real numbers, okay? And uh, so let's just find all real solutions real quick. So if I wanted to find all solutions, then, you know, if here's my one solution, right, which we figured out to be 7 pi over 6, and then here's my other solution, which we figured out to be 11 pi over 6. If we find all real solutions, then to keep on getting a solution, we just need to add 2 pi. And we can add 2 pi infinite many times. So therefore, this would be. Um, the solution would be plus 2 pi n, because n could be a positive or a negative integer, and this would be plus 2 pi n. All right, but now again, we're trying to solve for x, right? So we're going to divide by 2. And just remember, when you divide by 2, you're dividing everything by 2. So x is going to equal 7 pi over 12 plus pi n. And this would be x is equal to 
11 pi over 12 plus pi n. Now again, our answers need to be, now we need to kind of go back to our restriction. So we're only going to write down the answers that are between 0 and 2 pi. So again, we're adding pi, right? Well, in terms of 12, pi is the same thing as 12 pi over 12, right? So basically, I'm going to take 7 pi over 12, and I'm going to keep on adding 12 pi until I can't get more than 2 pi. So then we need to say, well, what is 2 pi? Well, 2 pi is 24 pi over 12, right? So let's just start with our first answer, 7 pi over 12. All right, so I'm going to write my solution set down here. So I have 7 pi over 12, and then I have um, 7 pi over 12, then I have 11 pi over 12. Now, if I add 12 pi over 12 to 7 pi over 12, that's going to give me 19 pi over 12. So what I did is I took 12 over 12 plus 7 pi over 12 to give me 19 pi. Let's do 12 pi over 12 plus 11 pi over 12. So I'm adding a pi. Let's say n is equal to 1. Let's pretend n is equal to 1, right? So, well, first of all, if n is equal to 0, I have 7 pi and 11 pi over 12. If n is equal to 1, I get 19 pi over 12 and 23 pi over 12. But notice, if n is equal to 2, that would be 24 pi over 12. Well, plus another 7 pi is going to be already over 2 pi. So therefore, that is going to be my solution set. Um, so hopefully that helped out. Sorry, I may, um, we, have, we don't get to trick for a while, so my explanation might have been a little rough on that one. Um, but hopefully, at least it kind of made sense what to do with those double angles. Solve it individually as it is first, um, and then